the chat by the the sentence that says and God said let the earth sprout vegetation seed bearing plants fruit trees of every kind on earth that bear fruit with the seed in it and it was so the earth brought forth vegetation, seed-bearing plants of every kind, and trees of every kind bearing fruit with the seed in it, and God saw that this was good. That's just what I was sort of focusing on at the moment when you asked. Um, so it's like the world is good, which is very different from the tradition of the monarch and I. There's a lot of positivity ha happening here, yeah. Yeah, like God's <laughs> good pretty, stuff. pretty pleased with himself, yeah. and, and you'd think that that w we should also view the world as a good thing, right? It's not... Yes. Something to be uh, appreciated and cared for and protected and honored. Yeah, and we're, we're asked to be the, the be fruitful and multiply, fill the earth and subdue it, rule over the fish of the sea, the bird of the sky, and every living thing that moves on the earth. So how do you feel about... How do you feel about that, ladies? That we're we're asked to uh, by God to subdue the earth. Which verse is that? Chapter one, verse twenty-eight. <laughs> we're asked to subdue the earth. I wonder how we're supposed to interpret that word, and how close that is to the original word and the original meaning of that well, word. Well, what's, what word do you have? I have the subdue. Yeah, subdue. Yeah. What do you have? I think it's often translated as subdue. And there's, I've got yeah. no footnote either, which suggests that there's not that much ambiguity there. Yeah, that seems pretty, uh, yeah. blunt. Well, I mean, if you have to subdue something, that means it's, it's wild and un yeah. un hard to contain and out of control it doesn't and... doesn't necessarily mean oppress. Or, or, or right, it, it just right, maybe right. means that to, uh, potentially it could be interpreted as um, create order within it, impose order within it. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah. We're, we're, we're asked to impose order on the world. Yeah, I think that makes sense given that this entire chapter is about order, it's about mm -hmm. balance, it's about mm -hmm. God said this, this happened, it was good. The setting and dawning of the first day, God did this, he said this, it's good you know, dawning, you know, whatever, of the, you know, setting, dawning, the fifth day, whatever. Um, there's an order to things. Um, it's hard to believe that there are any traditional Jews who are anarchists, because, like, anarchy <laughs> and chaos just seems to be the total opposite of the Torah's perspective on life. Yeah, I mean, it seems life. to have a real fear but of anarchy and chaos. But... I think some people might, though, believe that anarchy is, or in certain moments, it is. That's the way that that's the way you go about restoring order again, because it's you know what do you mean by order to begin with? I mean whose order? And if the so-called order is really you know a government or a community or a whatever that's gotten out of control and that's simp simply you know pretending to be ordered, then maybe some kind of anarchist impulse is necessary to subdue it. I mean, I don't know. That's, I mean, it's not that simple. It's not so simple as, you know, chaos, anarchy. I mean, people disagree on what that means. Um, I don't know. I do have trouble with the next verse. I mean, have dominion. Well, the end of 28, have dominion mm -hmm. over and the fish of the sea, the fowl of heaven's only. Yeah, but just this idea of dominion. Yeah, the, by the way, the, the subdue, subdue in my translation is, is actually, uh, the word is translated as master, not subdue, which is interesting because it it, that has a master totally different world. energy to it, that, that word and implication. Master and subdue are so different. But yeah, so yeah, rule the fish of the sea, the bird of the sky. So what does master the world mean to you? Well, you know, sometimes when people talk about mastering something, you know, I want to master guitar. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it means, you know, to get really, really, really good at it. Um, so you could kind of interpret fill your and master as, you know, like use it as well as you can. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I like that, but I think it's a very generous reading of it. I it like is. it, though. I it do is. like I it. Because, like, <laughs> like, if you were given an acre of earth, 
and you was told to master it by your boss. Uh, kind of like enslave it. Like when I hear master, I master think of if master is Nazis, a verb to master. I don't think that. I They're think no. I think I think the history of slavery <laughs> in America. That's what I think chef. of to master something. <laughs> <laughs> I'm to <laughs> But if you, if you to master something, I mean, I think of you have to enslave something. Something becomes enslaved to you if you master it. That's a very negative. It's reading so of it, yeah. It's so funny because I have I don't have that association with that word. Interesting. I, I, I like your interpretation better. Like I'm always thinking about how I want to master the guitar or like. You know, master Persian what? cuisine. Maybe or something I have like issues that. with authority, though. So. No, but I do too. <laughs> do you, okay. Trust me. How about subdue? Do you ladies use the word subdue? Relate to the word subdue. <laughs> I don't know that that's a word I use. Um, what I thought of when when we were talking about the word subdue was <laughs> my dog, and how mm -hmm. I have to subdue him. Yeah. yeah. For, I think you know, that's what the term is. Right, and it doesn't mean that I break him or that I, you know chain him up or, mm -hmm. you know, lock him in a little crate and keep him there all day. It just means that I am in charge. It's sort of like, you know, God saying, all right, I made this for you, and now you're in charge of it, so mm -hmm. take good care of it, you know, like, master mm -hmm. it, figure out how it works, you know, figure out how to cultivate it and keep it blooming. Um, Monica, you said we skipped the good stuff when I went to 28. So what what's, what are your favorite sections of chapter 1? 26. God said, let us make humankind in our image according to our likeness. Yeah, that's great. Okay, so first of all, who is us? Is that just the right. royal we? Yeah, exactly. Or <laughs> what is yours say? Let us make okay. man in our image. After so yours says man? Let's make man, man yes, and God says, kind. let us make man. Mine says yeah. humankind, and this goes back to, Rashi will affirm my interpretation here, or my explanation here, right? Because the word here, the Hebrew word that was used was not one for man, it's one that implied um, sexual ambiguity, not sexual ambiguity, but like a hermaphroditic, it's like a dual gendered being. Mm -hmm. And that was even before. I mean, that's, that's coming, I'm getting that from Rashi, from my little... Art well, this is before Eve, so can there be gender? Right, there's not, yeah, exactly. You know what I mean? Do you, do you exactly. need to have that contrast? But then in 27, so God created humankind in his image, in the image of God. Did he create it? Male and female, he created them. Yeah, God created It's man. like there is one creature that's Ma dual yeah, yeah. gendered. Okay. So it's sort of like he pulls them apart when he creates Eve. Rather than right, it's like I think Ra I think this is Rashi where there are there are two sides, right. and then in Genesis two they're actually just like split. It's not like a rib coming out of the man and right. creating a woman. It's it's like the yin and the yang being pulled apart exactly. into two separate entities. Exactly so from a different um, philosophy. I mean, because Genesis two is going to contradict this. I mean, it's going to tell a different version right. of the creation narrative. Um. So why? Why the two, you know, right back to back, the two sort of different... Well, I mean, it's, it's different writers. It's people who come along and say, well, that doesn't, that doesn't tell the whole story. Either I want to explain what happened further because, well, that doesn't really tell us how men and women came to be. So then somebody comes along and writes Genesis 2 explaining how men and women came to be. Um, or it's somebody who doesn't like this image of male and female equality. And equal parts, yeah. 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 Wait, but <coughs> if if each creation is a higher rung of creation, I mean, before man it was the animals, before man it was the plants, so we're always getting higher and higher. According to the to to you, the author who's not so into male female equality has now made women the apex of creation. That's One true. could argue that, but that's also used. I mean, that's an argument that's also used as a disservice to women. Oh, as the pinnacle of God's creation, we need to protect you. You can't read from Torah. You don't need. I mean, right. I, I you're think already that it can perfect. Become, you don't have to right, study. Yeah. right. And yeah. I think that there's, so there's no pleasing you. It's, it's not so if, you're, if if man was created out of you, and man was then the apex of creation, you'd have I a problem with like that too. The man being the apex, or the woman being the apex of creation. I like this right here, 26 and 27. 
Why don't you like 